Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is really special because we're going to be honoring other lost moms and other angel babies. So a couple months ago, I asked some moms from one of my support groups if they'd be interested in participating in a video that would just be informative and help to bring insight as to, I guess, the things that go on like behind the scenes or things that happen in stillbirth and afterwards that most people are not aware of unless you've gone through it. I thought this would be a great idea because after losing Braxton, I felt very isolated. I felt like nobody really understood what I was going through and that people just assumed that it was something that I would just get over or move on from quickly. And losing a baby is something that never goes away. <laughs> it's not something that you move on from or that you get over. It just isn't. But that's going, that's probably going to be another video. So today I just wanted to share the stories and the other angel babies. And thank you to all of the moms who participated also. They're in no order. I'm going to just, um, so Courtney Stahl says, Hi, I love this and I would love my angel to be included. His name is Andrew and he was full term, a perfect 8.3 pound baby boy, born sleeping March 2nd of 2018. I would like people to know that he existed and he is 100% real. I hate when people say to me, you can just try again. It is hurtful and I don't want to hear that. What I want is for him to be acknowledged. I got to spend the weekend holding my perfect sweet boy who should be here with us and I hate every day because we are missing a piece of our puzzle. Thank you so much, Courtney, for participating. I agree 100%. I totally understand everything that she's saying. When people say, you can just try again, especially when people said that to me oh, only like a couple days after losing Braxton, it was just like, you can't, <laughs> like, I'm never going to get Braxton back. I know I can have his a sibling for him, but I love Braxton. He's my first baby boy. It's not like I can just go and have another Braxton. <laughs> Tiff Worrell, she wanted to include her baby boy. Tiffany Worrell, mother of Knox Worrell, born sleeping on September 14th of 2018. One thing I would like to say as a mother to an angel is that it's the last thing you have and ever will expect to happen. Signing death certificates, to planning a funeral can and always will be the toughest thing to do. But remember that there is a group of women that are here to support you from day one and on. It's never going to be easy. It will never be forgotten, but I promise it will get better. Prayers and hugs to all the moms and dads. This is a big one. <laughs> so I think a lot of people don't think that far to... Just play play that image in their head that this woman just gave birth to a baby and instead of signing a birth certificate, she has to sign a death certificate right away. I mean, I don't think I ever imagined even signing a death certificate for Braxton at any age, especially not when he was born. And then to go from that to having to plan his funeral a few days later, it's just terrible. And I plan to, it's hard to talk about that because it's, it's hard to think about your baby's body there at the hospital when you have to leave your baby. And I wanted to make a video on that topic also. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ren Yanto Baguio, on March 28, 2018, born sleeping at 39 weeks and 5 days. Hi, my name is Renabelle, and my firstborn son's name is Raikin Aries. I had no chance to kiss, hug him, and carry him with my arms because my family didn't want to. They were concerned about, about my health, maybe because I gave birth via C-section but they don't know I'll regret that all of my life. We buried him two days later. It breaks my heart most when I hear 
Other babies cry at hospitals, and all I can do is cry in silence. There's no such thing as moving on if you lost your child. The sadness of losing him will be forever in my heart. She's so beautiful. That breaks my heart. <laughs> Those are the only moments that you have to hold on to when you have a stillborn baby. Those are the only memories that you get to make with your baby. And I just think it's so terrible that you weren't able to do that. I'm so sorry. I'm sending you a really, really big hug and kiss. My name is Anne Marie, and my angel baby is called Sarah Annabelle. She was stillborn on September 30th of 2014. I was told that the hospital could not find her heartbeat two days before giving birth to her at 8.20 p.m. What I would like people to know about stillbirth is that it affects the fathers just as much as the mother and trying to stay strong for each other can either make or break you. It broke my ex and I, but we have a rainbow baby boy who keeps us both smiling. We may not be together, but we co-parent and always keep our son's elder sister in our hearts and minds. This is the last picture I have of our angel while her heart was still beating. I can't face looking at pictures of her taken by the hospital for us. She was too perfect to have gained her wings and those pictures will never be shared on Facebook. What she said about dad's grieving too is one million percent accurate, and that's actually something else, another topic that I'm planning to make a video about that also, and um, actually I think Jonathan might do that video. I might, yeah. Uh, but this is from Kate and Ryan. This is Bennett Lake. 39 weeks and one day. He was still born on September 6th of 2018. So Kate wants people to know that something that really crushed me was finding out that since our baby was born sleeping, he doesn't get a birth certificate. They only get a certificate of remembrance. When we were told that, we had never felt more disregarded as parents. It made us feel as though our baby wasn't real or wasn't worthy of being recognized as our son. I held a full-term, beautifully perfect baby in my arms, and it felt like I was being told I somehow hadn't birthed him when he was the most important thing in the entire world to me. I agree. Yeah. When a baby only gets a certificate of remembrance, and a baby not getting a birth certificate, it's like saying that they never came into this world and they never existed. I mean, just think... That's something that really needs to be changed. Aubrey Blankhart. I'm Aubrey, mama to Jasper. He was born sleeping at 42 weeks on August 25th, 2018. I wish I knew I wasn't in the clear after the first trimester. I wish I knew that stillbirth could happen. I wish I knew that it could happen to me. Yeah, I totally agree with her saying that she wished that she knew about stillbirth. Me too. I feel like when I was pregnant, I did a lot of research and I was on my phone 24 seven looking up pregnancy things and never once did I see anything, never once did I even see the word stillbirth in any of my apps. Um, my doctor never ever brought the word up to me, so and that's another reason why hearing that your baby doesn't have a heartbeat just puts you in a major shock because you, you've never heard about stillbirth. You don't know anything about it. Your doctor never warned you about it. You didn't know that this was a possibility. Actually, your doctors convince you that everything is perfect. Um, that was definitely the case for me. I thought everything was going fine, but that's another video again. I think from now on I'm going to just read what the moms have to say. Um, otherwise, if I keep talking, I'm going to make the video really long. Chia Yao Gan, and I really hope that I'm saying those names right. Hi, my angel baby's name is Zane. He was born sleeping at 39 weeks and 5 days on August 27th. The hardest feeling is the secret strength you gather after leaving labor room on a wheelchair with no baby in your arms. Shine Portolatin. Hi, I'm Sunshine, mama to Julia Skywalker Perez, who was born sleeping on July 21st, 2018, 
at 40 weeks and one day. What do I wish they knew? That we are still a family and he will forever be our son. Beautiful picture. Tabitha Lynette. I'm Tabitha, 26 years old. My angel was born sleeping at 36 weeks. His name is Alaric James. What I want people to know is that even if you seem like you're healing on the outside, that you look happy, is that you're really hurting and you have no one to talk to about it in your family. So you're just hurting alone. Yeah, I have to chime in on this one. Um, the stillbirth is something that even your family doesn't know what to do to help you. <laughs> yeah, so. The next one is from Liz, friend. <laughs> so she's Sophia's mommy. Um, something about stillbirth is that it's completely out of your hands. My baby was stillborn because of someone else's mistake. So for her, what happened was a car accident that was someone else's fault. And this is something, the fact that your baby is stillborn and the fact that it's out of your control is something that can cause a lot of anger. You just feel like you did everything right to protect your baby and you had no control over losing them in the end. And you just feel cheated. I know I felt really, really angry because I just felt cheated. I felt like I did everything right with Braxton. I was really healthy. Louis or Louise? My name's Lois. I had my baby boy, Caden, David, Jeffrey, Timewell, at 32 weeks and two days on the 24th of September, 2018. I found that one of the most horrible things was not hearing my baby cry when he entered the world. Also, signing a death certificate without receiving a birth certificate was horrible. My partner feels one of the hardest things about losing our little boy was how unexpectedly it happened with no sign that anything was wrong. Thank you, Louise. Leslie Gibson Young. My name is Leslie. My baby's name is Oliver, and he was still born at 38 weeks and three days on November 21st, 2018. I would like people to know that this is much more common than anyone would like, that you did not do anything wrong, and that it is 100% fine to talk about this. If it makes other people uncomfortable, that's on them and not on you. This is your baby, or these are your babies if you have lost twins. And you can talk about him, her, them as much as you want. Thank you so much for sharing that. That definitely needs to be said. The next one is from Christelle. She's one of my friends too. Her baby was born the same day as Braxton. Um, we talk a lot and we actually found out that we were induced almost at the exact same time in different states, but it was the same nightmare was happening to us at the same time. Something she would like to say is that, or people to know is, I would like if they would put more interest during the last months um, of pregnancy and having more ultrasounds. Completely agree. And I honestly feel like my, my son would be here if that was the case. Um, and the US is another one that I want to make a video about. So many things to talk about. But in the U.S., I don't know how, what it's like in other countries, but in the U.S., you only get one or two ultrasounds during your whole pregnancy, which is insane to me. And, I mean, it's just, I just think that a lot more needs to be done, a lot more monitoring. So that was the last comment for the video. Thank you again to all the moms who participated and left comments for me to share. It means a lot that you were willing to share that and I think it's going to be really helpful to our lost community. And it was an honor for me to be able to make this video and honor all of our babies. I'll see you on the next video.